Harry left through the back door. It was a brilliant sunny day. He crossed the lawn, slumped down on the garden bench and sang under his breath. Happy birthday to me. Happy birthday to me. No cards, no presents and he would be spending the evening pretending not to exist. He gazed miserably into the hedge. He had never felt so lonely, more than anything else at Hogwarts, more more even than playing Quidditch, Harry missed his best friends, Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger. They, however, didn't seem to be missing him at all. Neither of them had written to him all summer, even though Ron had said he was going to ask Harry to come and stay. Countless times, Harry had been on the point of unlocking Hedwig's cage by magic and sending her to Ron and Hermione with a letter, but it wasn't worth the risk. Underage wizards weren't allowed to use magic outside school. Harry hadn't told the Dursleys this. He knew it was only their terror that he might turn them all into dung beetles that stopped them locking him in the cupboard under the stairs with his wand and broomstick. For the first couple of weeks back, Harry had enjoyed muttering nonsense words under his breath and watching Dudley tearing out, tearing out of the room as fast as his fat legs could carry him. But the long silence from Ron and Hermione had made Harry feel so cut off from the magical world that even taunting Dudley had lost its appeal and now Ron and Hermione had, forgot, had forgotten his birthday. What wouldn't he give now for a message from Hogwarts, from any witch or wizard? He'd almost be glad of a sight of his arch enemy, Draco, Draco Malfoy, just to be sure it hadn't been all been a dream. Not that this whole year at Hog Hogwarts wasn't had been fun. At the very end of last term, Harry had come face to face with none other than Lord, Lord Voldemort himself. Voldemort might be a ruin of his former self, but he was still terrifying, still cunning, still determined to regain power. Harry had slipped through Voldemort's clutches for a second time, but it had been a narrow escape, and even now, weeks later, Harry kept waking in the night, drenched in cold sweat, wondering where Voldemort was now remembering his livid face, his wide, mad eyes. Harry suddenly sat bolt upright on the garden bench. He had been staring absent-mindedly into the hedge, and the hedge was staring back. Two enormous green eyes had appeared amongst the leaves. Harry jumped to his feet just as a jeering voice floated across the lawn. I know what day it is, sang Dudley, waddling towards him. The huge eyes blinked and vanished. What? said Harry, not taking his eyes off the spot where they had been. I know what day it is, Dudley repeated, coming right up to him. Well done, said Harry, so you finally learnt the days of the week. Today's your birthday, sneered Dudley. How come you haven't got any cards? Haven't you even got friends at the freak place? Better not let your mum hear you talking about my school, said Harry. Dudley hitched up his trousers, which were slipping down from his fat bottom. Why are you staring at the hedge, he said suspiciously. I'm trying to decide what would be the best spell to set it on fire, said Harry. Dudley stumbled backwards at once, a look of panic on his fat face. You c can't. Dad told you you're, you're not to do m magic, he said. He'll chuck you out of the house and you haven't got anywhere else to go. You haven't got any friends to take you. Jiggery pokery, said F Harry in a fiery voice. Hocus pocus, squiggly wiggly. Mum, howled Dudley, tripping over his feet as he dashed back towards the house. Mum, he's doing you know what. Harry paid dearly for his moment of fun. As neither Dudley nor the hedge was any way hurt, Aunt Petunia knew he hadn't really done magic, but he still had to duck as he aimed a heavy blow at his head with the soapy frying pan. Then she gave him work to do, with the promise he wouldn't eat again until he'd finished. While Dudley lolled around watching and eating ice creams, Harry cleaned the windows, washed the car, mowed the lawn, trimmed the flower beds, pruned and watered the roses and repainted the garden bench. The sun blazed overhead, burning the back of his neck. Harry knew he shouldn't have risen to Dudley's bait, but Dudley had said the very thing Harry had, made, ha, he, Harry had been thinking himself. Maybe he didn't have any friends at Hogwarts.
Wish they could see famous Harry Potter now, he thought savagely as he spread manure on the flower beds, his back aching, sweat running down his face. I was, it was half past seven in the evening when at last, exhausted, he heard Aunt Petunia calling him. Get in here and walk on this newspaper. Harry moved gladly, gladly into the shade of the gleaming kitchen. On top of the fridge stood tonight's pudding, a huge mound of whipped cream and sugared violets. A joint of roast pork was sizzling in the oven. Eat quickly, the masons will be here soon, snapped Aunt, Aunt Petunia, pointing to two slices of bread and a lump of cheese on the kitchen table. She was already wearing a salmon pink cocktail dress. Harry washed his hands and bolted down his pitiful supper. Pitiful supper. The moment he had finished, Aunt Petunia whisked away his plate. Upstairs, hurry! As he passed the door to the living room, Harry caught a glimpse of Aunt, Uncle Vernon and Dudley in bow ties and dinner jackets. He had only just reached the, the upstairs landing when the doorbell rang and Uncle Vernon's furious face appeared at the foot of the stairs. Remember, boy, one sound. Harry crossed to his bedroom on tiptoe, slipped inside, closed the door and turned to a collapse on his bed. The trouble was there was already someone sitting on it. And that's the end of chapter one. This is um, Dudley eating his junk food while watching TV. Right, so this is chapter one. As I said, it's called The Worst Birthday. Clearly, we understand why. Tomorrow, we are going to read chapter two, and it's called Dobby's Warning. So it's left us on a cliffhanger because we know that someone's sitting on Harry's bed. We know that Harry saw a pair of eyes in the hedge staring back at him. We don't know who that person is or what it is, as a matter of fact. So, yeah, um, stay tuned for chapter two tomorrow. Have a lovely day, guys. Bye.